The deadly disease smallpox was eradicated in 1979. Prior to that, it used to kill over 15 million people a year. This is all thanks to vaccinations, and that's what we're learning about today. Make the most of this video and your revision time with my study along workbook. It's got loads of tasks to complete while you watch and exam questions to test what you've learned. The link is in the description below or head over to emmatheteachy.com. In the previous video, we learned about how the immune system defends the body against infection. The issue is that some diseases act quickly before the white blood cells have time to make the right antibodies. Some of these are deadly diseases like meningitis. But thanks to Edward Jenner and other scientists, we have vaccinations to prepare the immune system. Here's how they work. Number one, a small quantity of dead or inactive pathogen is put into the body. This is called a vaccine and it's normally delivered via an injection. The white blood cells will then detect the antigens of the pathogen and begin producing the correct antibodies. This takes some time, so it's a pretty slow response. But that's okay, because if the real pathogen re-enters the body as the full disease, then the white blood cells can produce the antibodies much more rapidly. This time, it's a fast response. The pathogen will be destroyed quickly before they can cause any symptoms of illness. Vaccinations have saved millions of lives around the world. If a large enough proportion of a population is immune to a communicable disease, then the disease will not be able to spread easily and may even be eradicated. Over here in this picture, you can see that this pathogen is struggling to spread because if you look at the members of the population, they've all been vaccinated. This only works if it's many people in the population. But if there are a very small number of people who haven't been vaccinated, for example, if they're very young or very old or have an illness, then they'll still gain immunity as the disease cannot spread to them from the other people. This is known as herd immunity. That's an important phrase to remember, so let's highlight it. And it's also important to remember that this only works if there's a very small number of people who aren't vaccinated. In this example here, Let's say that this lady hasn't been vaccinated because she has an illness that prevents her from doing so. She'll still be protected from catching this pathogen if everybody around her is vaccinated. The World Health Organization is aiming to establish global herd immunity for a number of diseases. Ongoing education and financial support is necessary to make this possible. Let's test what you've learned. Pause the video and try these quick questions in your head or in your study along workbook and then press play when you want to go over the answers. 1. What is in a vaccine? A small amount of a dead or inactive pathogen. 2. How does the measles vaccination prevent a person from getting measles? The white blood cells make antibodies in response to the measles vaccine. If the person gets infected with measles, they can produce antibodies more rapidly to destroy the virus. 3. A person who has not been vaccinated for a specific disease may still be protected against it. Explain how this is possible. Well, they may live in a population where herd immunity has been achieved. This means a high enough proportion of the population have been vaccinated so the disease cannot spread. Other acceptable answers include that they may actually have already had the disease, in which case their white blood cells can make the correct antibodies rapidly to destroy the pathogen before they get ill. And if you knew about it, you could also include that babies get antibodies from their mother through the placenta and breast milk. This gives them temporary immunity even though they haven't had any vaccinations. Don't worry if you didn't include that, as it's not on the specification, but it is a correct answer, so well done if you got that. All right, how did you do on the questions? Next up, we're learning about antibiotics and painkillers. Click here to watch. And if you've enjoyed this, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking that big red button down below. 
Thanks again for watching. Bye.